JBN, we keep you informed. I'm Michelle Jones, and in the news, man killed while visiting girlfriend in Little Haiti. A man was gunned down by unknown assailants while visiting his girlfriend at her home in Little Haiti, near Grillingworth Smallland, on Tuesday night. The deceased has been identified as 43-year-old Gerald Browner of Red Ground, near in the parish. Reports from the police saw that Browner was at his girlfriend's home when she went outside to speak to her mother, who occupies a room at the rear of the apartment. Shortly after, his girlfriend reportedly heard loud explosions sounding like gunshots coming from the room that Browner was in. When the shooting subsided, the report said she went inside to make checks and saw Browner lying on his back inside the room, suffering from what appeared to be multiple gunshot wounds to his head and upper body. The police were summoned and he was transported to the Savamar Public General Hospital, where he was pronounced dead. Investigations are ongoing. Baby abducted from home in Spanish Town The Spanish Town police are probing the abduction of a three-month-old baby on Tuesday afternoon. The infant, Roshin Malik Hall, was abducted from Horizon Park in Spanish Town, St. Catherine, sometime after 5 p.m. A woman had reportedly visited the home and was given the baby to hold. I told her Probox come to the house and the girl get the baby and drive away, a relative said. A report was made to the Spanish Town Police last evening. Cops squeezed elderly farmers' relatives in connection with his killing. Several relatives of an 82-year-old man who was found dead with his throat slashed have been questioned by police in connection with his killing. Stanford Baker, otherwise called Ford, a farmer from Mouth Plymouth in Leeds, St. Elizabeth, was wounded at his home by family members last Thursday. It was alleged that the elderly farmer might have been killed for money, as a few days earlier he had sold several animals. It was also alleged that he had more than $30,000 and the money was killed and that money could not be found. These allegations, however, have not been confirmed by the police, as efforts to speak with the parish's top cop, Superintendent Kenneth Chin, has so far proven futile. But Senior Superintendent Stephanie Lindsay, head of the Corporate Communications Unit, CCU, the police information arm, confirmed that some of Baker's family members were questioned in connection with his killing. Some relatives were asked to come in, and they were questioned and allowed to go. There was no one in custody, but investigations continue, as SSP Lindsay said. Police had reported that relatives last saw the elderly farmer about 10 a.m. on Wednesday, January 4. Having not seen him the following morning, they went in search of him around 9.30 a.m. He was reportedly discovered locked in a shed in his yard. The shed was forced open and the now deceased was seen in a pool of blood. The police were summoned and on their arrival, the lifeless body of the deceased was found lying face down. During the processing of the scene, it was discovered that his throat was slashed. The body was later removed and an investigation launched. Alleged chain grabber shot and injured in halfway tree. An alleged chain grabber was shot and injured in the vicinity of the halfway tree transport center in St. Andrew on Wednesday. Reports are that the alleged thief grabbed the chain of a man walking in the area. The man, who is said to be a licensed farm holder, reportedly chased the alleged chain grabber and shot him. The suspected chain grabber was later accosted by the police who were posted in the area. Jamaicans reminded precious metals belong to the state. On the heels of this week's dash tops of riches, from what was believed to be the discovery of gold in Hanover, the Mines and Geology Division has stated that the Minerals Westing Act confers the right to all minerals to the state. It says these include metals, such as gold and silver, or minerals containing copper, lead and iron, precious stones, carbonaceous minerals, such as coal, and some industrial minerals, such as marble, high-purity limestone, and silica sand. While the mineral found in Hanover was not gold, but pyrite, a substance of little economic value, members of the public are still being encouraged to report such discoveries to the Mines and Geology Division. The, di the division says it will investigate the mineral occurrence and provide technical and economical recommendations towards its development. It adds that if a mineral deposit is developed, the law provides so share the royalties payable on the minerals mined to be allotted to the landowner. The division notes that scientific curiosity of the public 
has led to many important discoveries that have added to the body of knowledge on the geology of Jamaica. Clarendon Farmer confesses to murder. A 36-year-old man has been charged with Monday's murder of 47-year-old Giovanni Parkinson, otherwise called Doreen, of Park Hall, Clarendon. Charges Omar Willis, otherwise called Dippy, a farmer from the parish. Reports from the Mapin police are that about 2.30 a.m., Parkinson was at home with relatives when he heard noise outside his home and went to investigate. A few minutes later, his relatives reportedly heard him calling for help and shouting Willis's name. Parkinson was subsequently seen suffering from chapoons to the head and upper body. The police were summoned and Parkinson was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. Willis was later arrested and after reportedly confessing to the crime, was charged. A court date for his appearance is being finalized. No blight for hothead drivers. Director of the Island Traffic Authority ITA, Kenyut Hare, is warning motorcyclists who have removed their silencers from their mufflers to produce roaring sounds and motorists who fit their vehicles with multicolored lights that they will be specially targeted this year. Hare made the pronouncement on Sunday during the first virtual town hall meeting of the St. Catherine South Police Division. St. Catherine has featured highly in traffic accidents in recent years. We'll ensure that we divert resources especially to St. Catherine to ensure that we can intensify our road spotting operations to catch these motorcyclists. You would have heard some load bikes. That means some individuals would have taken the silence out of the muffler and that is an offense. We have decibel meters and just to see our machine at the Highland Traffic Authority is well oiled to enforce, he said. The Road Traffic Act will allow us to use a decibel meter. Every examination depot across this island is in possession of a decibel meter. We're looking to see if we can procure some additional material to ensure that more officers can have this device, here told the meeting. We'll not be extending any sympathies at all to persons who are intent on floating the regulations. We'll lend all the support that the constabulary needs across all the police divisions. I know it is a challenge for the police force to deal with motorcyclists, but we encourage you not to let up with them and rest assured that the ITA will give all the support needed to restore public order, here stated. Additionally, he said the ITA will be very supportive of night road spot checks and road safety operations throughout the Era 5 division. Those persons who love to drive at night with the fandangos on their vehicles, those multicolored lights, if you don't hear, as Granny say, you will feel. We don't have a problem issuing you the E1 certificate of defect, and you'll have to face the law as it relates to that, here cautioned. In a further appeal to individuals who tint their windscreens, here said, please remove the tint. I have issued strict instructions that no blame must be given to anybody who tint their windscreen. We at IT have been removing the lesson place of people who fit that criterion, he said. In the meantime, he said the IT would prefer if motorists obey the law instead of floating them and risking the loss of points on their license or the loss of the license itself eventually under the new Road Traffic Act and its regulations, which will kick in on February 1 this year. If you get between 10 and 13 points of your driver's license, it will be suspended for six months. Get 14 to 19 points of your driver's license. It will be suspended for one year. And for 20 and over points, the driver's license will be suspended for two years. The law of the land will not be mocked. We're employing persons, work with the program, would like every Jamaican driving a vehicle. The same way you can go on Google and download all kinds of things. Download a copy of the new act and read it for yourself. Ignorance of the law is no defense. You're warned. If you have a driver's license already, behave yourself. Don't be no shutter driver. Don't be no hothead driver. Don't be no hot foot driver. Because long run, short catch, the ITA head said. JFJ wants swift suspension of CPFSA head. Human Rights Lobby Group, Jamaicans for Justice, JFJ, is calling for the Public Services Commission to move swiftly to suspend Chief Executive Officer of the Child Protection and Family Services Agency, CPFSA, Rosalie Gage Gray, pending the outcome of a comprehensive investigation into her conduct. The Office of the Children's Advocate, OCA, has released an explosive report knocking the CPFSA ahead after several wards were exposed to an American donor who was punished for indecent involvement with a minor. The report accused Gage Gray for gross breach of care for engaging Carl Robonsky through the CPFSA. While natural justice and due process underpin the need for a full investigation before more permanent measures are taken, including possible termination, Ms. Gageway cannot remain in the position as is, the JFJ contended in a media release on Wednesday. 
JFJ said the circumstances are untenable given the erosion of public trust and made allegations of failure to protect wards of the state, alleged interference with investigations, and purported misrepresentation of facts. JFJ stated that having read the OCA's report, it believes that the situation is reflective of an institutional failure that basically gave carte blanche access of children to an alleged sexual predator. The group questioned whether the Center for Investigation of Sexual Offenses and Child Abuse was engaged at all and whether the persons purported to have intimidated and interfered with the OCA's investigation faced any disciplinary actions. JFJ called for a further investigation by relevant authorities to ascertain if there are any clear breaches of the Child Care and Protection Act that may warrant termination, criminal charges, or other appropriate sanctions of CPFSA officers beyond the Chief Executive Officer. JFJ said the saga raises questions about the level of oversight provided by the Ministry of Youth. It also wants the government to implement strong background check procedures for all persons interacting with children in state care. Greater emphasis on the teaching of civics. For this new school term, the Ministry of Education and Youth will be placing greater focus on the teaching of civics. Civics education encourages good citizenship, greater respect for cultural integrity and nation building, among other things. It has been reintroduced to the National Standards Curriculum at all levels. Portfolio Minister Favel Williams provided details to the media during her interaction with students and staff at the Constant Spring Primary and Junior High School in Kingston on January 9, the opening day of the new school term. We have relaunched civics in school. There will be an emphasis starting this term that all our schools teach civics, not just the 95 who are doing so. We have well over 1,000 schools. The curriculum has been put together. It is out and it is in the schools. We believe it is important for this to happen. So our children have national pride from a very early age. They understand who they are as Jamaicans and what it is that is required of them, she said. The minister pointed out that the program is an important addition to the curriculum which will assist students in getting a better understanding of who they are as Jamaicans and their development into law-abiding, productive citizens in the future. In the meantime, the ministry will be seeking to promote greater involvement of parents in the education process and to facilitate improved channels of communication between parents and schools. We want to continue to emphasize that parents are important stakeholders in the business of education and we are calling on parents and teachers for greater cooperation, the minister urged. She said that in those instances where disgruntled parents wish to express concern about certain issues, they are to utilize established processes and protocols to communicate and resolve these problems. We are really emphasizing parent-teacher cooperation and for parents to see themselves as part of the education system as a support for their children who are in school, the minister added. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.